I first need to um, announce that the planning board meetings are being held virtually as well as in person pursuant to uh, Governor Baker's order following the COVID guidelines and that our meetings are broadcast live and digitally recorded. Okay, so I'll call the meeting to order here tonight are uh, Bill Holman, Hans Steiger, and myself, Alice Libdahl, the chair. Um, we have, we always start meetings with public comments and these are for people that aren't agenda items. So this would include some people waiting and would also include you. So, um, and Damon is here as well. So, uh, and David Nixon is not here who was gonna come. All right, so Damon and Allison and Nicole. Okay. Damon, I'm gonna let um, I'm gonna let Nicole and give me your other your Craig. Craig and Greg. Is it Craig or Greg? Greg. Greg. Sorry. In your last oh Fisher, that's right. I did read all your email. It's just like Fisher, um, who are here to talk about uh, 28 George Howard Road, and they have questions about that's a farm, I understand, at the present, and mm -hmm. they're thinking of purchasing it, is that correct? And they wanna, um, well, you explain what you wanna do with it. Okay, sure. Talk to Francois there too. I hope everybody can hear me. I'm Nicole, it's my husband, Greg. Hello. So, um, and we're actually joined as well by the listing agent, Sally, who's Hello. behind us. So we're really interested in purchasing the farm, mm -hmm. which is currently 320 acres, of which over 200 of those acres are protected. Correct. Um, our goal is currently being utilized as an agricultural farm. There's haying and mm -hmm. everything that's happening. We intend to keep it that way and keep the integrity of the land. That's really important to us. Um, but in addition, we would like to be able to have weddings there. We think that the property is absolutely stunning. We have no interest in subdividing, which a 300 acre property, I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in that. Um, and we're really here to introduce ourselves, introduce ourselves to the town and understand sort of where the next steps would be. I've personally spoken to um, the building uh, department head, zoning enforcement officer. Roland G. Yeah, Roland yep. suggested that we come here and introduce ourselves to you guys because um, we're trying to see how we can fit in. Um, so some things that I noticed in reading the together, reading the bylaws is the property um, allows for tennis courts or a country club or a golf course, which to us is a huge impact on the current environment of the property with, you know, being open seven days a week and tons of traffic we have no intention of doing that has have hosting weddings would be just a weekend experience with people coming in once in the morning and leaving once at night the impact to the land is really limited and we want to keep that as a separate entity to already what the property is being utilized for so really we're open to hearing from you you know how you think that would work with the current property and we understand we'd need to ask for a special permit um here's our problem we yeah. can answer it a little bit um so Hubbardston is behind some of the other towns in having a it's they're called a set farm accessory uses right bylaw we don't have one yet okay we're trying to develop one mm -hmm. it's not easy and the stumbling block it would allow things like breweries vineyards wedding wedding events mm -hmm. um and those things we know we know that there are other people that have farm properties that do weddings, right. but they're dry weddings. And I don't know whether you can get, a, you know, there are a lot of issues and there's no, we've kind of looked the other way, Got it. but we're working on doing that, but to get a bylaw done. And I think there's widespread support for it, mm -hmm. but any zoning bylaw is a two thirds vote of the town okay. to pass. So it's not in our hands entirely it's in the town sure. stance we, we can, think we formulate the bylaw but we but we formulate it and we present it and we have to have mm -hmm. public hearings and we have to draft it and it's not an easy thing to draft because it's 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 not simple it's a whole right. bunch of different uses that you would want to put in there and um the town meeting is june 9th or something like that that's there probably isn't really enough time to get it to the voters this year mm -hmm. possibly in the fall possibly next spring 
And the town has, um, we, went, we talked, met with the select board, two of us did on Monday. And they're, we're telling them, look, you, you want to develop business in this town, but right. you've got to have more people that can help regulate and permit because you can't, you can't do it without those people, right? Right. We have a lot of enforcement issues. We have just a lack of, the building department doesn't have enough manpower and the town has been cash strapped for years and years. The new recovery money is helping. So my best guess is that it'll actually be in allowed use probably after town meeting next year. So but I can't one, promise that. One of the things that um, it's, it sounded like you were alluding to is that um, we would have to require um, or acquire rather a liquor license. No, um, you, or, well. Because what I was gonna say is one of the things that we'll be doing um, only uh, is bringing in full full service caterers. They may have their own license. I don't know much about how, house, right. how that works. So you have to get be. your own and uh, you hire a bartender that would bring in as a group or whatever. Um, so I do the catering, so the I, I've done all this before. Oh, yeah, he does you license. hire them to come in and yeah. they have the insurance and they're yeah. in yep. charge of actually serving yeah. everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Then there's no liability yeah. for you and yep. they, they actually hold all of that. Right. Um, That's so exactly so the that. Would, that would work for you. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is the current allowed, well, their special permit uses. So currently there are two sections. There's the, if you, you can have a special permit for a golf course and for a country club and for a tennis court. So those are allowed if you have, a, if you, if the planning board grants a special right. permit for those things. Right. So a golf course could in essence host weddings. Yes. Also, you're allowed as a right to have a bed and breakfast. That's true. Yes. So if you have a building on the property that would be Which suitable. Which there is now. Right. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you to violate. I can't, I can't tell you what's truly permitted what you want to do. Right. I can tell you it's on track to be permitted. Yeah. And I can tell you that there's a lot of interest in it. And there are people that sort of behind the scenes are actually doing this. Right. That we're it's aware of. Well, I think but, the thing is that we plan to build. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to build we would we know we're not going to get the building permit until we get the special permit that, that roland has told us this i mean what, what does your time frame look like to do yeah. to initiate well because it's currently up for sale mm -hmm. we obviously don't want to purchase the property unless Correct. we have the contingencies in place mm -hmm. for this special thing so our goal would be if we could purchase it to basically get a building permit soon and begin building next year um, the, the, the structure where the, the weddings would take place. Um, but obviously we can't, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg kind of mm -hmm. scenario that we're dealing with. The other thing that I noticed is we could make a very strong argument that it's a home occupancy in the sense that I looked at home what, occupation, home occupation, sorry. Mm -hmm. I looked at what the definitions are and I feel very confident that we could make a strong argument for each of those in the sense that, you know, one of the things is, um, that it's, uh, that there's no, a no, no noise issue, which if you look at who the abutters are and you look at the size of the property, we're over well over 2,000 feet, maybe even more mm -hmm. away from. Yeah, you are. The, yeah, exactly. Very... So I wouldn't be concerned about that. And there are various other items that fit within that that could essentially be argued it think, could fit in that category. I think the home occupations have limits within the building. But you, you mean the size? I think it does. I haven't read I it don't recently. I remember again. seeing that in the four occupation. or so. But you can do farm buildings too are allowed. So if you wanted well, to it build. It has a barn already. It has up there barn two barns. Barn. Yeah. So you wouldn't be right. converting. We would not be. Where were you going to build? Where the old Where house? Where the old house? Yeah, the you know it well. Yeah. Yep. yeah, exactly. Do you remember Dave's property? You know, you know. Yes, yeah, so where the fire was. So that yeah. already has the foundation. It's an ideal spot. There's actually a driveway that goes up there, which right. the town currently plows. So there's lots of reasons why it works. Right. I if there if it would make sense to go down that road to get a special permit for or a strong argument for the home occupation, because we don't want to have to wait for this other special permit from the town. I would feel comfortable going down that road because I we did take a look at what those subsections are and it seemed like we could very easily argue that this works in this category. What kind of building are you 
we're going to build a house or no it would be a kind of like a barn structure yeah oh, okay. very similar to the aesthetic of the property already okay yeah the company that we have found actually um does what's called barn kits mm -hmm. so it's actually built in within six months which is really ideal That's awesome. and you can customize it so we're again you know our goal is to not come in and build some take right. over the huge piece of land but to make it work right. with the land that's well, I, there the, i think the town's very much in favor of, of those things mm -hmm. they're in favor of having businesses come in too mm -hmm. um the biggest thing and what alice is stipulating here we got to be careful with the regulations say that we don't go against that even more sure, so um it just and if i may i mean one, one thing that i would point out is this i mean depending on what you use is and very specifically, if, if you are planning on doing weddings here, I mean, I, and, and unless these are dry weddings, uh, the, 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 you really need to work with an attorney, in my opinion, on understanding what the limitations are, specifically with regards to uh, the number of people that can be at, at, at any given location. But more importantly, if your intention is, is to provide entertainment and also potentially down the road, also serve beverages that are of some potential alcoholic nature those may not necessarily be included in the uh, in the clauses that you just cited and I, I, i'm 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 not 100 versed on it but i would say that you are probably best off making sure that you are very very clear in terms of what you are entering in if you go that route no it's a good point i don't remember any of any of that specifically with alcohol being mentioned in the home occupant I well, she's yeah. looking at it now. The though. home occupancy, I'll just read it to you because yeah. it's a paragraph. It says, an accessory use mm -hmm. of a single family residential structure. Which it is. Um, yeah. so, you know, if you really think of a banquet room, that's not a single family residential structure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And involving provision or sale of goods and or services and the creation of handicrafts and artwork artwork which one is carried on by the members of the family residing on the premises plus no more than one non-resident assistant or employee so that i looked at and the one thing about that is when you look at farms and huge in this area obviously um everyone many people will have a farm as a secondary to their home usage and they don't just have one employee yeah, but they farms, have farms are a protected use under the state law they get right. special exceptions, so they're entitled to their farm workers and the zoning people. Even but if a farm a worker is not an event person, right? Uh, I, I don't think it fits well in this structure. You have some options. Yeah. One is you can. I mean, I can't eliminate the risk here for you. I can't, I and we don't. We can't grant something we don't have the power to grant, right? Alice, tell you. you oh, someone's trying to say something. Alice, grant, yes. Uh, Bill Murray keeps raising his hand, so I'm not sure if you want me to put him in as a panelist. Sure, Bill Murray's our yeah. advisor. Our Go ahead, put him in. The other thing is you have a right to propose a bylaw yourself with signatures and you could do that. And you could bring it to the planning board and we could, but it's a very complicated thing and we're trying to sweep in all of those uses. Yeah. So that's why we don't want to do just a wedding venue as a specific no, totally use, sure. but how is a golf course allowed? Is that just when you wrote the bylaw, when the bylaws were created, it just was one of the items that they oh, yeah. thought about? Country club. Or country club. It was, it was just. They have a country club operation. Yeah. It, well, That's what it was plus it's, you know, yeah, every bylaw is what people country. want, but if it's enlisted, we can grant it. If it's not so listed, it's define, beyond so our. Maybe the question is, how do you define country club? Yeah, because I I film I film weddings for a living. Um, I've been doing this for years. I film a country club all the time, um, and golf course, and uh, they they have in their banquet halls there, uh, well, just would, like they do for their members. You'd have, and, you know, you'd probably they, have to have a membership structure, at least something uh -huh. to hang your hat on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I want to let Bill Murray speak, if he wants to. Does he want to? Speak? Can you hear me? Can we can. You hear it? Uh, just a couple of very quick points. Both Francois and I live on Moosehorn Pond, which is adjacent to the property that they're talking about. I don't believe that we're a butters, but just to make that known, that both of us are proximal to the land. Um, yes. And then the you do not have a definition of a country club in 
your bylaws, but I would think that they could apply for a special permit as a country club because it could be a public, not a private membership club because it doesn't define it in any way. Right. Um, and then under the special permit process, the planning board could in fact restrict it to whatever is you know, the desire of the applicant and meets the requirements of the planning board. I would think it is a possibility um, to do yeah, under a special that's permit. That's interesting actually that you say that because we would want there to be restrictions actually specifically because in the contracts that we're gonna have with the potential clients, we want restrictions to protect the integrity of the land, mm -hmm. to protect the neighborhood, and also just to create an environment that is safer and smarter for everyone involved. So we, we have already, the two of us, discussed what limitations there might be, and we would have absolutely, we would actually encourage that there be limitations put in something like this. Well, so, for example, one of the things that, you know, just to give you an idea, um, is we would have a cutoff time for you know, right. live music. Um, right. And another thing is we would have, uh, we would really be pushing transportation. Um, and we've already done our homework. You know, we know where the hotels are, the proximity right. of the hotels, uh, transportation companies that are nearby to just really just encourage safety right. overall. That way it's like two buses maybe going mm -hmm. in and out right. as opposed to well, a multitude of cars. I, I see okay. it. Um, it's kind of an end run, but we can't act on anything unless you present it to us. Okay. So there is a special right. permit process. Yes. If you want to give it a try, I'm not going to speak for the rest of the board and would depend on what's in it. It has to be, it would, it's, it's, you're going to spend some money on it because it's not an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You have to put a plan, you know, a site plan together and, and follow the rules. Yeah. Sure. But it's, so like a, a quick type I've of thing. seen the special permit application yeah. and okay. we've discussed it. We already okay. have floor plans already drawn up. We've done a lot of the due diligence up front already. Um, so we are prepared to be able to do sort of whatever we can to. I think you need the property plan as well. Yeah, the site plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I need to cut this off because I have a very big agenda. Sorry. And our Appreciate limit is usually time. five minutes. Yeah. No, so. Okay. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Okay, thank you. Well, good luck. And yeah. we're, you know, you could get the special permit and convert it if we get our, I mean, you know, this. Oh, that's a good point, too. Yeah. I'm just oh. telling you where we sure. are yeah, so you understand. Okay, all right. Okay, awesome. thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Once you get in the process, we do have a lot of history about that property, too. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. All thank right. You. Thanks. Okay. Oh, yes, sure. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your evening. You too. Okay. I'm going to. I know Allison Muirhead is still there and Damon is still there. Is that right? Um, no, Nancy Dennis is here and Damon is still here. The other one left unless she just got disconnected. Allison. Okay. Well, Nancy is part of you. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. And okay. So then, um, and Damon is still there. You say? Correct. Yes. Tell, tell Damon, um, we, he'll be next after this gentleman is here. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so this is uh, Jeffrey Dennis, there at the Heelville Road. Um, uh, the, problem, so the tree cutting and the stones and so on. So he's here to address that. And uh, Bill, can you join our conversation as well? Or feel I'm here. To? Okay, I I'm am gonna here. Hear from you and so yeah, yeah. Come, no, come up and sit. That's fine. Come to the table. Yeah, and then you right. can hear him better. Okay. We were kind of keeping distances because of COVID, but it's all right. No, the big fine. table. And I also want to. Do you to want me to go before Nancy Dennis? Are you not Nancy Dennis's are significant you? other? My no, I, I, am, I am the guy who did the work, and I, I just read. I got a copy of the letter, so I'm here on behalf. Of her, okay, we'll I'm have not. Nancy. I'm sorry. So, so Jeff, what, what, what? Jeff, I believe, is her husband. Jeff is her husband, and you are who? I'm George. Chris Perner, like I filled she, out. Chris I'm sorry. Contractor. Okay, Chris Perner, I am very sorry. I'm nope. sorry. That's that's why do you want to let them? <laughs> yes, I'll let them talk first. I was so it's Jeff and Nancy. Okay, so. They are in the meeting. I'm just waiting. They need to unmute. You're going to promote Nancy, right? They're already in, They're already on the screen. There they go. They're unmuted now. Okay, okay we all okay? come up and sit. You're still part of this. I won't yell at you. Can I hear you guys? Can you guys hear us? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I want I do want to say to you to the Dennis's and, and actually to, to Mr. Werner as well, is I this letter was intended to be sent out earlier and there were a lot of problems because last Thursday wound up being Veterans Day and then Friday they're not open and then Mallory got very ill. So <laughs> I would have never cut the notice that short. So I do want to apologize for that. But but anyway, we need to resolve this. So go ahead, Nancy. Okay, I'm sorry, but our computer cut out during probably what you were talking about, but I know you guys were questioning about the wall, the stone wall. When we yes. had the meeting, we originally said we will repair the wall or totally fix it within reason because it's kind of like a mismatched wall. I mean, there's places where stones are just like basically there and then, you know, down lower there's like a wall and we don't have a problem like rebuilding it that's not a problem so i don't know okay so the the the, the um right of way is the area between the edge of the road and the boundary stones that mark you know they're i don't know probably 20 feet in that, that mark the edge of the right okay. of way yeah well, oh, and I know many of those are large field stones. Mm -hmm. and, and actually a wall can be just comprised of the large field stones laid end to end. Because okay. Because they, they were, they're, they're a historic artifact. That's one reason they're protected. Because they're a legacy of the farmers. Mm -hmm. move the stones to the side. So we, they're considered a, a very important part of the uh, beauty, the scenic beauty of right. Hubbardston, these stone walls. Now, other people, you know, rocks or stones, and but that's that's so 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 they need, but they also function as the the an actual borderline between where the right of way is that the public has a right to pass over, and where the private ownership of the land, right? Okay. So so when you move them, you actually violate two laws. One is you're not supposed to remove boundary lines, and the other is you're not supposed to disturb the scenic wall. Now, if there's another wall, I know this property slopes deeply down. Mm -hmm. If there's another wall at the bottom of that, that's say 25 or 30 feet from the road, that's your wall. So we're concerned about the ones that are on the, that line up along the road. Okay. And I think they were overturned by the people pulling the logs out from behind the wall. So those need to be restored and then there's deep ruts and the, and then the tree trunks are, they left them at about four feet high. So um, we can let Mr. Berner address those issues, but. I mean, I can let you know, as far as if you guys want to actually keep it the same way as like the original people, you know, back in the, whatever, how they laid the rocks, I'm fine with that. If you guys want to just leave it like that, that's fine. I don't have a problem, just let us know. Because at the first meeting, I said that, you know, if we did something, we were going to repair it, and then we're thinking about rebuilding it. So obviously, with you saying that, you do not want us to rebuild. So basically, just put the stones where they were, correct? So the boundary stays exactly the same? Yes, and, and to the extent okay. that you've turned up the earth, so you can't you know, you got to restore the level of the earth and where they were, not only the, you know, having the stone right side up. I mean, it's not about that. It's Correct. about really restoring that whole area to what it looked like prior to the construction. construction. And, and there was a fundamental misunderstanding about the trees too, because our, but we take some blame for that because we didn't go out and look at it. Um, but really the only trees that you're allowed to cut in the public right away are the ones that are either a danger or needed for access. So I thought the trees you were cutting, we thought were all being cut so that you could install your driveway and that would be the part of the wall you'd be removing. And these trees were all in that area. Um, so it was a shock to us to go down and find out they'd been flagged and cut the whole length of the property. So but that was my original intention. I just wanted to clear it all because I didn't want the trees falling on the house. 
that was yeah, you know, as far as the trees go. But anyhow, getting back to but like man, this, when you came into the meeting, you did not stipulate that at the meeting. You you said you wanted to cut down the nine trees. It was at nine. Nine and, and the yeah. And, and that was that was the end. And I think that's what yeah, there was nine in that straightaway. They were spread out over that, you know, from one end to the other end, because I talked to the tree warden and I told the him what I wanted warden. to do. I don't know. The tree ward, it was just supposed to be with sight distances means to us generally so that you're not pulling out of your driveway into a blind turn. You know, there's not a big bush or tree blocking your sight to the right or the left. And so it should have been confined all of the, the only trees which we really allow to be removed with the driveway opening are those that are actually where the driveway is going to be, a couple feet on both sides for the snow piles. And then if you actually can't see around a tree when you pull out because it's on a curve, you know, we would agree to that too. So, you know, I don't know this point, okay, stop. Yeah. you know, at this point they were approved. We don't know how the other trees got marked. They weren't on our exhibit, but we need to at least restore the wall and, okay. and remedy the, the big stumps. And we've gotten a lot of complaints. So. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Bernier, and he's going to tell us what he wants to do. I hope. Okay. First of all, it's Mr. Perner, not Perner. Yes. Sorry. Okay. It's only short. Perner. That's right. That's how <laughs> I know. Okay. And I would Mr. like Perner. to address a few of these things from this letter that was sent. Okay. First of all, the extensive land clearing or tree clearing, we're talking about less than half an acre for a house lot, which was what the whole thing was proposed for. I mean, I don't think it was any secret that the land was purchased to build a house, okay? And I've been doing this a long time. And when I spoke to Nancy as she approached me about cutting this lot, I said, we can't cut these roadside trees unless you have a hearing. And I had put this job off for months and months and months, mostly because of the weather conditions this year, okay? And I made sure that the hearing had been held and that the okay was there and the trees were marked. And at that point, we cut them. She said they had the hearing, the, tr it, the tree warden had okayed it, we cut them and that's, as far as the high stumps, there is one high stump behind the wall, okay? The stumps between the stone wall and the roadway, I mean, if those need to be cut lower, we'll cut them lower. But in speaking to the town, when they cut roadside trees, I've never seen them remove the stumps. If you want to go right over the Cruz Road, right on the corner, there's a stump that's four feet across yeah. and three we're, feet tall. We're not talking about grinding the stumps. I, I don't mean grinding yeah. the stumps. What I'm saying is yeah. the stump is there, okay? Yeah. These stumps are there. The point I'm trying to make is that those trees would not have been cut if permission hadn't been granted. And I questioned her unmercifully about it because you don't, you just don't cut the roadside trees. I spoke to the tree warden. They had the hearing. Nobody showed. We cut the trees. I know they're cut. I'm well, not asking to replant uh, that, them. That's, but we, there we seems to be an awful lot yeah. of complaining now. So what I'm saying is when we cut those trees because of where they were, we pulled them back across the wall for safety reasons, to make sure they didn't fall in the road, onto other people's properties, hit the lines, anything like that. The trees went across the stone wall. Now, when I had spoke to Nancy prior to doing this, she had intimated to us that they were planning on fixing the wall up anyways, because if you're going to build a beautiful house in there, this stone wall and scenic or not it wasn't much of a stone wall if you look at the continuation of the wall beyond where her driveway is and where we're cutting where we cut those trees 
it's not like we're talking about a beautiful stone wall or anything. It's basically rock strewn along the roadway. That is why I didn't really see a lot of significance because she said that their plan was to redo the stone wall. And in going into this letter, I mean, it, it, it talks about removing this. We didn't remove any stones knowing that the stones were going to be used to be put back. And along the roadway where the stumps are, where we cut the trees, whoever goes in to do the dirt work is going to be pulling those stumps. Okay. When you pull the stumps, there's going to be some alterations to the wall because the roots are going to be underneath those, underneath that wall. I well, mean, it's just, it's, that's what's going to happen. I think, Bill, okay. So, so, I mean, I just, I just want to, I just let me finish this, but I, as, as, a high stumps, I mean, the stumps we could cut down, that's really not an issue, okay? And um, we didn't, and again, we never would have cut those trees unless the permission had been granted. I mean, I understand the angst that it's probably caused now, but with that being said, I, I want we, everybody to know we wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been. And, and we understand that, Chris. Well, we, I just think the way we talked to the tree warden about it. This is not. There was a little confusion. A big confusion, and and from now on, because of the situation, anybody that wants to do anything is going to have to li live by the letter of that law. You got to have a plan. It's got to be to scale. You got to show the circles, where the trees are, and we're going to be out and, there. But now we have something we have to remedy. No. So what I'm asking is, you know, they're saying there's ruts that well, we were in there with forestry equipment. Right. Okay. We have the trees piled up because we didn't want to go in there to cut and chip anything because we're waiting for the uh, dirt guy to come in to make us an entrance so we don't have to unload on the road so that we can go in there because I spoke to the highway boss, Travis, that's what he would like. So in order to remedy that and clean it up, we just, sorry, sorry. Oh, we just, I thought that was that. I want, you know, if he, when they're allowed to go in there and do it, that will allow us to pull the trees out, chip all the brush, clean up the wood, at which point the guy doing the site work will have pulled the stumps those will be taken out and the stone wall we, as, okay you're uh, talking about pulling out the stumps in the right of way no because we don't want them pulled out we want no. them cut down to as close as you can get no, them no, to the ground no, reasonably no, i wouldn't i wouldn't pull the stumps along the road anyways i don't yeah I right okay done it. so what i'm saying is on the inside. inside of the wall there's one tall stump I mean, it's probably four feet tall. It had some big leaders on it. We cut it off. I can go and cut that off if that's, you know, causing somebody quite a bit of angst. It's not, we're talking about five minutes worth of work. The stumps along the roadside, if you would like those taken down to a lower level, I can do that. Yes. We want those I people. have no, but I mean, there's no, there's no damage out along the roadway at all. I mean, the trees were cut, but there's no damage on the, I spoke to Travis who Brown, there's no damage to the roadway or anything else. I'll cut the stumps down. That's not an issue. Cut but the I, stumps down and restore the stones to their previous. The stones are going to be something that when the site guy goes in, he's going to have to pull the stumps on the site for the house. Do you see what I'm saying? Isn't that the whole point of going in around? Right. Or is he going to go over the wall to pull those no, stumps? No, he's going to, when he, when he goes in to make the driveway so that we can get in, at some point they're going to okay. pull the stumps to build the house. To clear the lot. To clear the lot. Right. And they're yeah. going to disrupt the right-of-way stones again? No, 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 no. Forget the stone wall for a minute, okay? On the inside the property. I'm yes. not talking about outside. Forget the trees along the road. I'll cut the stumps down. That mitigates that. 
let's move inside the wall. Inside the wall is where there's one stump that's probably four feet tall. We could cut that down, but at some, you know, just so it's not unsightly. Okay, that's pri that's on the private property. Yes. That is beyond our jurisdiction. Well, we then, would love to have you do it, but our concern is the field stones that form the wall and the stumps in the right of way and the grading of the soil back to how it should look. Well, We're I restoring think, the right of way. Can I interject just a minute? Yep. And I think what Chris is saying here, and I think what the board is upset about, in the beginning when this whole thing transpired, we thought, and I don't know if I'm getting the numbers right here because I'm going from memory. I think originally the application was for nine trees. Right. And that's what we granted on it. And we didn't. And then some four more were marked in a different color that we didn't even know we were approving. And we didn't know about that. So when people, when we started hearing about it, that caused some concern. And we actually made <clears> a few <throat> mistakes because we're a new board and we've never, we've well, only done a couple of these. But anyways, we made a couple of mistakes and we, we're going to fix that now. And, and Jeff Bork marked those trees. So he's right. And he admitted and, he did it. And so, so that's. That was another problem, not yours, right. but on our and, side and, of it. And with that aside, and you know, but let me finish, Chris. Right. Let me finish, okay? Um, now I got to get my train of thought back. I That's apologize. Okay. But um, as the whole thing played out, we heard about all the other trees that came down, and I agree with you. They're trying to get this in, ready to be a, have a house built, and you have to clear the lot. Um, the issue with the trees you can't fix, and I and I agree. And Alice. Yeah. You can't fix the field stone until they complete the work on the lot, correct? And put them back to where they have to go? Right. The rocks on the stone wall. The point I'm trying to make is that when he goes into the lot to pull the stumps for the lot, the stone, you know, there's trees that were along the stone wall on the inside, not the town side, the private side. The rocks will get put back. Okay, and at that point, the stone wall can be remedied at that point. Okay, it's putting those rocks back is not going to be a huge deal. I don't, I don't think that making it. Why? I don't understand this. There's, you got 200 feet of frontage. Yes. The trees were cut down the entire 200 feet of frontage. Yes. We granted a, a, like a 12 foot right away for the driveway. Yes. So I don't. I, I, we never expect the rocks that are in that driveway to be restored, but we expect the rest of the 175 feet or whatever it is, those yes. rocks have to be put back. So if they're coming in to remove the trees on the other side, why can they not do it from the driveway cut? We, 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 the reason the rocks are jumbled now is because the trees that were cut on the roadside fell across the wall. That's okay. how you got them to the ground. Right. For safety. I don't think the neighbors would have been thrilled if we dumped it over the street onto the wires right. into their yard. Right. So those trees are still <clears> laying So there. those trees fell over with the whole idea from the beginning that they were going to, they knew those trees were coming down because they had had the hearing. They, so, with that being said, they knew and said they were going to redo the stone wall, which is what Nancy just got done saying not five minutes ago. Right. The whole point is that they're willing to restore the wall back to whatever way that you guys want it. But the reason that we're here even discussing this tonight is because they got the permission to cut those trees. And the point I'm trying to make is that those trees were marked for a long time before we got, it wasn't like, you know, this transpired over two weeks, okay? This was months and months and months where I put this job off because A, I was busy doing other things and B, it had been raining so much, I didn't want to go in there. Okay. But <clears throat> so when we finally got in there, you know, again. Why do we have to wait until stumps are pulled on the other side of the wall in order to restore? You don't have to wait. To, you don't have to wait to restore the wall till the stumps are pulled. But we're going to go in there to pull the wood out. 
that okay. the trees that are in a pile. Yes. Okay. That people are complaining about because it looks messy. Well, we can't get in there because right now the site guy can't go on there because basically he, you know, I don't know if this is a stay or what, but he didn't want to go in there. Nancy told him to wait until after this meeting. We can go in there and clean that up. Okay. Cut. We, I can cut the stumps along the side of the road. Okay. Fixing the stone wall isn't going to be an issue. It's just getting in there to do it. So, Nancy, what do you think the time frame would be for all this to happen to, to get to get the area cleaned up and maybe graded? And... I mean, Luke Roddy was expected to go in there like Monday, but I pulled him out of there after I got the letter where you guys said not to do any construction work whatsoever on the site. So as soon as I get off of whatever we decide we're gonna what's gonna happen, I'm gonna inform Luke and see. Hopefully he can get right back in there. Hopefully his schedule didn't get too geeked up. Um, as far as the rocks, I mean, I would say we could probably fix. I mean, if we can go physically and there's only a couple, if it's not that bad, we'll move them basically, you know, to where they would have been. I mean, as long as I don't need machinery to do it, if we need machinery to do it, we might have to wait until like the spring and fall. Like I would say the spring, he'll be in there in the spring building, hopefully. And then we can just do it then. I mean, I'm not gonna hold it. I don't wanna hold this up. I wanna like get it going. And I'm trying not to work against you guys. So it's like, I just need to know exactly what you want me to do. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Bill Murray on, he's our, He's the person that uh, is most familiar with this lot, and he actually lives there. He's our advisor near there, and his goals sees it. But I have gone out and walked it, walked it, and I don't, I don't see Bill. I'll recognize you in a minute. But if we put a remedial order together that says they shall cut the stumps on the right of way down to not more than what six inches above the ground, above the ground level, yeah. and they. Yeah. And they shall restore the the boulders that were uh, removed to their original position within I don't know sixty days. What now? I'm going to hand it over to Bill. Go ahead. What do you think about writing an agreement like that? Well, everybody has a perspective, and every and, and I agree with a whole lot of the the various perspectives. Um, I'm pretty sure that a skitter climbed up and over that wall in order to take down some of those trees from the tracks that I saw up there. Exactly. And I'm not saying that we didn't. What we did was we used the buncher to pull the trees back. Okay. Okay. Good stop. I got it. I got it. Okay. Mr. Perner, what, what's going on is there's no question the trees were marked. The planning board admits that they were marked. But what was presented to the planning board at a public hearing that I was in attendance at was nine trees. And then 15 trees were cut down and the building, uh, the tree warden says, yeah, I flagged all 15 trees. So it's not your fault, nor is it the Dennis's fault that all the trees got cut down, but the representation in front of the planning board was not 15 trees, the entire frontage, because that would not have been allowed, but it's happened. So we can't do anything about it. There you go. We absolutely need the stumps to be cut so that the right of way is safe. People drive to the edge of the road because it's a narrow road. And we want to make sure if they go off the road for some reason, they're not going to take the entire undercarriage of their car out. So the ruts and the stumps need to be remediated. What goes on inside the property is your problem, it is the Dennis's problem. It's not the planning board's issue. But what happens along the frontage is. Um, and I understand it was the wettest July on record. I mean, it was a, just a bad year and that's a pretty mucky site. Um, the, the board has a concern that there are wetlands back there and you guys are really close to them, to that 100 foot buffer zone. And we didn't, you don't have a DEP file number and nothing's been submitted to the Conservation Commission. So I'm just warning people of that potential. Uh, but, the planning board can, under the scenic bylaw, require that that road and that stone wall be fixed before the spring, not at the convenience of the Dennis's, but at the requirements of the planning board. But I would suggest to the planning board 
what Mr. Perner is saying is when they go in to clear the lot, they're going to dig up stumps and it's going to further disturb the stone wall. Correct, sir? That's the, yes, with the stumps that are right along on the private side of the stone wall. So, so let me, let me take that a little further. So if we make them remediate it, they're going to come back in to, to start the site construction, the clearing for the footing and the house and everything else. And they're going to further disturb the stone wall when they pull up the stumps adjacent to the stone wall. Well, if, if, if this is the way you're looking at doing it, I would say they're probably trying to stay away from that as much as they can. You don't want to go fix it to have it pulled apart again to fix which, it again. Which is, exactly my, which is exactly my point. Right. So this planning board is, and I can't, I can only speak for them from my experience and that they're of course present so they can remand me. But this planning board isn't big into punishing people, but this is a pretty, all of my neighbors along Hillville Road have complained to me, I can't tell you how many times, because two of them have recently gotten uh, driveway curb cut permits and the number of trees they cut down was minimized. So this is the perspective of the planning board. But what I'm gonna to suggest to the planning board is the Dennis's give the planning board a timeline where they anticipate the construction of their house and lot. And then they give them prior to occupancy of the house that the stone wall shall be remediated. And there is no arbitrary standard here. There's pictures that you can go on Google Earth and you can see what the, the stone wall looked like before anybody disturbed it. And that's the standard. So and there's I'm nothing not, arbitrary here. All I'm saying is that the trees, I wasn't there for the, the hearing on the trees or anything. I can't speak to that. We know that. I wasn't there. But, and we're not saying that you did something wrong. We're yeah, saying the planning board, the planning board erred in not limiting the number of trees to the application and the, the tree warden error. Uh, and the applicant made a representation that was not 100% accurate as to what the clearing was gonna be in front of the planning board, but that's water under the bridge. So now we need the stone wall remediated. We need the stumps cut flush and the ruts filled so that Travis is happy because he's the important one. Travis and the planning board are happy, and I think that's the resolution to this without being uh, Bill, punitive to the applicant. Bill, I have one question. Yep. If the problem is, so you've got these field stones, and you're just going to cut the stumps level on the tree on the roadside, why, why are you letting him pull the stumps on the other side? Why shouldn't they also just be cut so the wall can remain where it was? Well, the wall's already partially destroyed. And as, as you had already said, you know, what they do on their side is kind of their thing. If they want a nice lawn going up to the stone wall. And I mean. Because that's going to be a mess for another six months if we allow is. that. If we say, you don't have to do a thing until we pull these stumps. And we want till next May to do that. I just yeah. think that's, it, it's not reasonable. But, well, if they go in and they fix the wall now, this winter, then they're going to come back and potentially damage the wall in the spring anyway. But they and, wouldn't. And, if they and, just... and we don't get to tell them that they, I mean, we get to tell them they can't further damage the wall, but you can't tell them that they can't clear their lot in the way that they want to. You can't tell them they can't. If you have trees whose roots are underneath a stone wall, Yep. in a scenic road, right? Yep. Even though the trees are on the other side and you're not allowed to damage the stone wall, then it should be within our rights to say, then you can't pull the stumps on your side. You can cut the trees, but you can't damage the wall, right? I mean, wouldn't all the walls be, all the walls have trees on both sides? No, not necessarily. And, and a lot of people keep the trees on their side to a, to a small size, but that's not the case on Hillville. I mean, why, um, why? I don't. I think when you say they're gonna they're gonna pull the, these big stumps on the other side, they're actually gonna really damage that wall further, and then all well, I mean, the soil is gonna be churned up from pulling the stumps. And then they're gonna have to restore it. 
Right. I mean, Bill, Bill, I think what 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 Alice is saying is is that one second, please. One second, please. I think Bill, what is what what Bill is saying? Is, I'm going to recognize Francois for a minute. Go ahead. Thank you. I think what Bill is saying. What I think what Alice is saying, Bill, is is that uh, we could, I, and and that's a question. Can we put a restriction that any further work that has to be done that is going to be done inside of the uh, Dennis's property should be done in such a way that the stone wall does not get perturbed again? The the short answer is yes, but I want to okay. give you all I want to give you all an analogy. Go ahead. Uh, this is a chimney. It's already been torn apart to its bricks. It's already collapsed almost as far as you can get it collapsed. So right. I think they should be they should remove their their stumps on their side and completely rebuild the wall because it is just it's this fine. And my next question would be the following: uh, Is there a way that the stumps that are the ones that are closest to the wall can they be removed? uh in with priority over the next say for example several weeks or maybe over the next month where this can be taken care of and immediately thereafter the wall can be rebuilt that's probably more a question to the dentist and to the gentleman who i'm facing i don't know his name but i would appreciate if he can answer that or the dentist can answer that if, if i can answer that yeah i think that the way to get this resolved is the stumps along the roadside, I can cut down low, lower to the ground. Okay? That's not my question. My question is in regards to the, the right, stumps that are on the other side. Cover the whole thing. Okay. So the road I just need to, I just need you to focus on the piece that is inside right. of people's on property, the please. Inside, if you allowed the site work guy to go in to expedite the driveway, okay, once he's in there and he starts on his site work. You can clean that up. I mean, you can go and pull the stumps out and then the wall could be remediated relatively quickly. It's not going to take him any time at all, I would think, once he's in there to pull those stumps and to, and at that point, remediate the wall. Okay, I just, it's not gonna take that long. It depends on when he can get in there he has to go in to make us an area to work so we can pull the rest of the wood out so we can clean it up and chip it, at which point he would go in there to do his site work. So if the, let's say that's going to happen, Chris, what do you think the time frame could be? And I, no, I wouldn't hold it enough. No, but and, and I, it's all going, I mean, we can go in there. Once Luke Roddy goes in there and preps the driveway so that we can get in, his part of it's not going to take very long. The stone wall part's not going to take that long. It's just a question of when can he go get in there? Because his schedule has changed because Nancy held him from going in there, you know, due to this letter. So he went off to another job. Do you see what I'm saying? It's it's going to kind of depend on the schedule. So that's, that's fine. Madam Chair, Ma I'm sorry, Madam Chair, at this point in time, I know I can't to get this. That. I mean, Nancy, I think, would be the one to answer that for you because she's the one who's going to talk to Luke Roddy. Okay. I don't. That's Nancy, not really can we get thing. this done in 90 days? I would say Luke should be able to get in there in 90 days as long as the ground doesn't freeze up, when you say? Yeah. I'm, I'm just talking to Jeff, gonna, too. I'm going to write an order. Bill's going to help us with that. Okay. Give us 90 no. days. If the weather doesn't cooperate, you can come back to us okay. and ask for an extension. Okay. The plan is to get it done as fast as possible. That's that's our plan. Get him in there, get the stumps done, get the stone wall done, and hopefully get the driveway so that he can get the logs out of there and then we'll be done. Okay, are you are you Jeff? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Just right get away. the letter out. And Bill, can you write that letter? Okay. Ken, I was I was going to suggest one other thing mm -hmm. that instead of we make it dependent upon occupancy, we say that no building permit shall be issued until the stone wall is remediated to the satisfaction of the planning board. I agree with that, that. Mo that motivates fine. all parties concerned. That's fine. Correct. Yes. So the dentist said yes to that, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 We need. And we're off. 
I'm in agreement. And Francois can't vote on this because he lives down there. No, he can vote. He can? Okay. I can vote. Uh, uh, okay, so. I he's not in the butter. <laughs> that Bill, Bill Murray is going to draft a letter to the Dennis's to stipulate that the wall has to be put remediated back to where it should be and everything's going to be cleaned up by the contractors within 90 days. If that cannot happen before the 90 days are up, they have to return to the They have to come board. back and get an extension. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, just one quick question. It's okay for Luke to go in there, correct? To, to put the driveway in, the temp driveway. Yes. Bill can write that in it too, right? Uh, that's up to Trevor. That's I, the, the highway department's responsibility. Yeah, we've already met with him several times. Okay, yes. So, so we need a second. Second. Francois, you want a second? Yeah, second. Okay, all in favor, live all aye. Bill Holman's Steiger. aye. Steiger, aye. Question, folks. Can they start this tomorrow if need be? Is that okay? With no, before the letter gets issued? Right. Yeah. Okay. Is that still legal for them to do that? That's at the pleasure of the board. I, I think it should be, be okay if that's what they it want. It would, but you'll be you have a letter by Monday, right? Okay, that's fine. You can he'll email it to me and I'll sign it on behalf of the board. Even okay, if I'll, Valerie isn't back, I can sign it. Okay, and I'll call Luke and get him in there as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. No. All right, okay. Thank you. Okay. Matter closed. We've got other people that have been sitting here, so. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming in, actually. And no, not trying to help us resolve this. And I apologize, I didn't get a chance to get out there to look at it. That's, you know, that's fine. I, like that's I said, point. I wish that they. Um, no, you can't. That's right. Um, Lori, can you. Yes. Damien bring in. Damien in. Please. I turned it down. And then if Bill, if you write that letter, I'm assuming that yeah. Mallory will be back on Monday, but if you want to just CC me on that one, at least, um, that way, if for some reason she is out, um, I can print it out and have it ready for Alice. So it doesn't post. Uh, I'll, I'll probably uh, CC Alice with a word version and she can probably okay, uh, print that that's letter to Alice. So I'll that's send it to you, Lori. Okay. Or if you need it printed out, that's fine. But I, I would anticipate she'll be back on Monday. But like I said, just in case. Okay, thank you. That's great. So Thanks, Lori. We, we have a big agenda and we've been at it for a long time and we're not even hardly started. So, um, but I did uh, talk to Damon. Damon, I have had some back and forth and I really don't like he, sort of too much conversations which between he and me without involving the board. So I wanted to let the board know that um, Damon had had written to me, um, and I, you know, what's posted in documents was a little confusing too. But basically, he had three concerns. One is he wants to put up a a cold frame, um, no, it's a shell, which would be like a hoop building. I know that document, the drawing of that was in the documents. It's a big building um 96 by 36 and that's to germinate the seeds basically although he said he might use it also for drying is over uh, and i'll let him talk about that he also um wants to increase the water supply from the well which we had kept at 5,000 gallons to an, again he's asking for a hundred thousand gallons and his reason was that he now has a new well that'll pump 50 gallons a minute with a pump that'll do 15 gallons a minute. And the third question he asked was about uh, his preliminary drawing for his next special permit had shown the dry cure building entirely on the residential side of the lot line. And he's talking about now putting it where the semis, uh, the, the so-called reefer trucks were uh, entirely on the uh, commercial side of the lot. So is that fairly accurate, Damon? Hi, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, basically we wanna, you know, come and ask the board, you know, about the hoop house, the 36 by 96 foot and see how the best way to proceed with uh, putting that in was. Um, and then 
Um, you know, I definitely just wanted to hear what the board thought about us moving the proposed, um, you know, 9,000 square foot building to where the freezer trailers are. Um, I doubt we could get 9,000 square feet there, maybe about 6,000, maybe seven. Uh, so just, you know, just want to hear what your thoughts were. We have so much crushed stone that we already put there under all of those freezer trailers. And we have so much electricity and PVC piping. Might make sense just to put a slab right over that. Um, yeah, and then the third thing was just the water usage. Um, you know, I'm not asking for 100,000 gallons a day. I, I was just, you know, mentioning that, you know, if this wasn't marijuana and I was a farm, you know, Massachusetts allows you to use up to 100,000 gallons a day. Um, you know, our pump that we put in is only 15 gallons a minute, and that's verse our well, which produces 50 gallons per minute. So we're, we're withdrawing less than our well produces. Um, you know, we have no intention to run our well 24 hours a day, uh, but if we did, it would only produce 20,000 gallons a day. Uh, so what I was just asking is, you know, for the board to tell me how you want me to proceed. We already reached out to Gordon. He just didn't respond. Um, so I'm just kind of looking if, you know, tell me how you want me to proceed or, you know, what scientific or, you know, what do you want to have Don Preventure tell us what to do to, you know, do some sort of uh, test to, uh, to show you that we're not going to be able to draw down as well. And then I'd just like to get rid of the, you know, the 5,000 gallon a day limit. Okay, I want to address a couple of things here. Yep. First of all, I did mention, and I meant to mention, which which is in the documents, that this cold frame, uh, the hoop house, is actually mentioned as being allowed in the community host agreement. It was part of the original permit. So I think that's the factor. The other thing I told Damon, which is the truth, is I don't know whether you need a building permit for a hoop house or not. You got to ask Roland because planning board isn't building permits yeah. and Roland's been out of town he's out of town this week and I don't know whether he was out of town last week but I, Damon hasn't been able to reach him and I haven't been able to reach him okay so and then the third thing is I am thinking that on the the location of the building you got to remember Damon nothing's in front of us right so it so without looking at plans at plans we don't know how it we might actually be closer to the neighbors on the commercial side because you do have a person on the side and, and they're entitled to come in and weigh in at a hearing. And, you know, it's it's not something that we can give you. Uh, I mean, if everything were equal, you know, if you had a square board and you say where all the setbacks were the same and the soil conditions and everything else, would you rather have it on the top half of the line or the bottom half of the line? We'd rather have it on the commercial, I think. But we can't give you that answer without having all the elements and, and the input from the abutters, because that's just what we need to do. And then right. Bill can answer your question about the water, because I did listen to you what you said. And I asked him, can we infer from that? Because it does seem like you have a good quantity of water coming out of there. Can we infer that it that you could increase that we could increase safely increase that flow? And he wrote back, uh, but he's here tonight. And he says, we really, we really can't do that because the quantity that can be pumped doesn't correlate with the amount of groundwater under there. Um, anyway, Bill can explain better. He says there's a way to do it. Uh, so, Bill, are you there? I am. Do you want to address the water situation and then address whether any of these three things can be resolved short of the phase two permit? So we give Damon directions on what we want him to do. Well, the hoop house is definitely Roland's call. Uh, I believe it's a structure under section 2.30 of the definitions of the zoning bylaw, which, and it's got electrical components. So I'm going to anticipate, but it is Roland's call. I'm going to anticipate he's going to say a building permit is needed. Um, and then you, the board, need to make a determination as to whether that's a significant change or a minor change to the original issued permit. Uh, because, you know, 36 by 96 is a big building. And if he's using it to start seedlings and then to dry or cure, that means it's going to be a three season structure at a minimum. And likely the plastic will be up year round, but be replaced on a regular basis. Um, 
moving the proposed building that yeah as you said i don't i have nothing to say about that that's when it comes in front of the board it comes in front of the board um but for the water i i absolutely do um damon has made the statement that he feels that this is a somewhat i'm sorry damon i forgot your wording but it's an economic hardship that we've imposed on him for the five thousand gallons per day and I reiterated what his engineer said that he had an opinion, but he would not give a definitive statement without further study. And we don't need Gordon, and we don't need Gordon's permission um, to do a definitive study because he could, Damon, uh, could drill a well between him and Gordon. He could pump his well and another and monitor yet again a third well. You need three wells, you need a draw well and two monitoring wells. And his engineer would then be able to issue a, a definitive statement, giving us a safe yield range. So I don't think that the planning board arbitrarily established a, a rate and they did so for cause, uh, the protection of groundwater supplies. Hubbardston only has groundwater wells and you know Gordon and the neighbors rely on groundwater for potable water. So it's my opinion that his statement is is his opinion. The facts that he's presenting are after the fact because he's drilled the well and he's got the numbers. So if he wants a modification of the special permit, I think he needs his engineer to come in and give the planning board a safe yield number. And I don't think that the planning board should pick one out of the air. It should be based on engineering studies and with a professional to stand behind it. The That's gentleman it. that represented in the, him in the first place at our special per special permit would be capable of doing that, correct? He is. He's a Massachusetts registered professional engineer and he's a hydrogeologist. Okay, so Damon, there are your choices. You can, awesome. you got to do the study. You got to talk to Roland because we're, yep. we're in your jurisdiction. And you can, if you want, just begin that phase two second special permit and put all three in. You can do that. Or you can come back piecemeal and see whether we consider a minor change or a major change. All right. Okay. Cool. Yep. No, that works. Uh, and and Chair, I do have a. Sorry. Yeah, I, Francois I will, wants I, to say something. Yes, I, Francois. I, I do have a quick question for Damon. How many plants are you planning on? Will will your facility will your location hold at its maximum? If we were to do the autos, which are the automatic strain, it would be thirty thousand every harvest. If we were to do what's called the photos, which are the, you know, the normal style that people are used to where they finish in, in the fall, um, you know, probably be 4,000 plants. And that's just a guess with the 4,000. I know the 30,000 autos is, is very good firm number. Uh, that's because that's what we're planning on putting in the ground in August. Um, so the photos at 4,000 plants is, is kind of a guess. It could be, you know, 3,500 or 4,500. So there's a, just a difference in size of the plants. So an automatic would be planted probably about, I think, 18 inches apart, kind of like cucumbers would be planted. So they're very, they're small plants. Okay. I, I'm, I'm assuming that you've looked at the guidance for best management practices of water use uh, that the CCC has put forth, right? Yep. And my question to you would be is, is how, do, how does your application fall inside of the guidelines that they have presented? Yeah, so we're outdoors. So it's a little different than, um, you know, indoor. I, I think- No, they have, they have very specific guidelines for outdoor. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just talking about the water usage. So- That's you know, what I'm asking too. Yes. Yeah, so we're, I would think that we're way under, you know, any type of uh, restrictions that they would possibly have. Um, it's not a restriction, it's a guidance. That's why I'm asking you the question because their guidance is that you should have roughly about six gallons per plant per day. Yeah, that would be an awful lot. Um, so that, that could be, I don't know, the outdoor, that would be an awful lot. Um, for indoor, if you're using maybe a hydroponic system, you know, I can see where that number might make sense. No, it is actually very specific that the outdoor cultivation, it says water requirements for outdoor cultivation vary widely by region and as 
an outdoor scale cultivation of cannabis in, is, is new to Massachusetts. There's, yes, to your point, there's no, no confirmed data. However, there's been studies that have been made where there's ranges that can vary between 12 to 15 inches, like say, for example, in British Columbia, in Europe, there's anywhere between 20 and 30 inches. But this equates roughly to about six gallons per plant per day, which is yeah. about maybe a twice as much as, for example, what grapes would use in the state of California, or, 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 or 10 gallons a day for cotton in, in Georgia. So I think there's some very specific guidelines that I'd ask you to maybe take into consideration. Look at the types of plants that you plan on putting there and then come back to us. I think that if well, you look at, I, let me finish, I, yeah, let me finish. Last year, my understanding was, is that you understood and knew how many plants you were going to be putting in, in, in potentially in the ground for the outdoors. And that at that point in time, when 5,000 gallons a day were presented to you as the option, I would have assumed that the math would have been worked for you. And if you feel like at that point in time, at this point in time, that it's not, we need to understand what the changes are, because that would indicate to me that there's been a change in scope from your perspective. I mean, that's just the logical, that's the logical yeah, conclusion I can come I, up with. I hear you. I, I think I read something or I've seen those studies on the Can Cannabis Control Commission's website. And I, I would say six gallons a day is junk. And whoever would water their plants six gallons a day must be in California. Um, so, I mean, I've grown marijuana for 30 years in Massachusetts outdoors. Um, and the biggest plants that I've ever grown were, you know, 10 feet tall by 10 feet wide. And those things never took more than five gallons a day, ever. Um, so, and, and I, I was just trying to grow the biggest plant that I could possibly ever grow. Um, but yeah, no, I can tell you six gallons a day would be crazy. You kill so your plants. My, my, my point then is, is I'm trying to understand based on the cultivation that you intend to have at this facility, uh, what, what, what your actual water usage is. Instead of coming to us and say, you know, I need 21,000 gallons, I need to understand the rationale behind that based on the total number of plants that you are planning on having there. And obviously, if you also have, say, for example, facilities like, for example, bathrooms and things like that, you must add those in together. So I'd like to see a, 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 a you know, put an Excel spreadsheet together. It's not very yeah, difficult. I, I can tell you right now, I don't know. I mean, who? I, I have no idea how much it's going to rain next year. I, I have no just idea. Use, so right. figure out, Just even use average rainfall. Do a exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think we'd use more than, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to put a guess on it because I've never grown 30,000 plants outside. So my, our, well, point, our point though is here, and this is from my perspective as a member of the planning board, I'm, we're trying to work with you and I'm trying to understand what your needs are. Yeah. And if your needs have changed since last year, I would like to understand what they are in order to be able to understand also what it is that you're asking as to whether or not this is, this is reasonable and measurable. That, that's that's my that's the way I would look at it as a member of the yeah. planning board. Yeah, I mean I don't hold on a second. You know that it will be though determined by what the well can draw as well. Sorry, I have three kids over there. Um, sure, but yeah, no, I mean our well only produces twenty thousand gallons a day, um, and you know we're not going to run our well twenty four hours a day for this. Um, I mean, I can give you a best guess, but it's just a guess. We're not going to know until we get water in the ground. That's my problem. I don't know that 5,000 gallons a day is going to be enough so my $10 million in plants don't die. And to, to bring water in from off-site means we have to test that water. It takes four days to get a test back. So if we needed, say, 15,000 gallons a day, we need an extra 10,000 gallons a day which means I need storage for like 100,000 gallons on site so I can test it. Then I can mix it with what my well is drawing. So I have the same pH. So it, it becomes not just something that's just as easy as, well, what's your number for the water on every day? I mean, if it's 100 degrees for two weeks straight, we're going to use a lot of gallons per day, you know, compared to September or October or May or beginning of June, where we might not use that much at all. Um, That's why I think the water study is also very Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'd love to tell you how many gallons per day. Um, all I can tell you is the biggest plants that I've ever grown around here. Um, you know, my plants, when I grow them in Royalston, you know, I water them every other day. And I take a five-gallon bucket and fill it with about four gallons and split that between two plants. 
So my plants that are huge only get a gallon per day. Um, you know, sometimes they get two gallons per day. But, you know, I don't know until we get them out there. And I don't know what 30,000 little plants in the ground are going to pull. But I just don't want to get caught where we, we need 10,000 gallons a day. And what are we going to do? Like, the, I, I can't the, the, only, the only rationale I want to bring here is, is that, I, and I understand every business has a risk, right? The point, though, is, is that uh, based on the assessment that you have brought to the board last year, you were you were indicating that with 5,000 gallons a day, you were satisfied. Now, this is dramatically increased. We're talking about a four-fold increase. And my, my concern here is, is that this risk now that you have, are presenting needs to be therefore quantified, and we need to understand what, how, do, how, how does the current environment from a, you know, from your land perspective and the well perspective can it mitigate that risk without also putting that risk on, 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 on the ground, on the groundwater that you have there, as well as potentially on your neighbors. We need yep. to equate everything. This is not just about the, the marijuana uh, field itself, yep. but it's also regarding the community that we need to also take into consideration. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make, uh, make to you, okay? I, bring, uh, us to you, bring to us your, your, your business case and the rationale for what, what amount of water that you actually need. All right. Yeah, so I'll definitely reach out to Don Preventure and and get him, uh, you know, get a plan from him and then come back and obviously show you guys our plan before we do anything. Does that sound good? It does, but I think that you, you're, you have to, you know, you know, you're in for that phase two permit for your building anyway. So think about maybe just doing all three in the one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I'll probably try to do the greenhouse first. Okay. Um, well, I mean, that literally only takes like three days to put in, so. Okay. Quick. You got to talk to Roland about it because we just do not have jurisdiction over building permits. Yep, I'll ask I agree him. that it's, it, it was in the host agreement, so it's an integral part of the growing. Yeah, yeah I don't mind doing a building permit. I just need someone to tell me what to do. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter well, to me. But we don't have jurisdiction over him. Yep. All right. Good call. Okay, well, stay in touch, and we need to move on to other things, all right? Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, David. Thank you, thank you, Damon, right. for coming tonight. And really, despite it all, we wish you great success. All right, really. thank you. We do. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. Oof. Okay. Alan Crane. Uh, He's not coming on. Do we have any other visitors out there? Guests? No, there aren't any. There's no? nobody. Okay, so to my planning board members, we have a problem then we didn't update our registry at the Registry of Deeds who has signatory power. So tonight, um, I, and uh, Francois, I sent you an email. I received it and I will work with that and uh, get it back to you. Okay, well, I might, you might let Bill and I'll sign it tonight. Mm -hmm. You send you send it back if you want, you might wind up sending it twice because they all would be on the same page. So maybe so you want my, to I guess my question is this here. Do you need a, do you need a wet copy or is, is it okay if I send you a, 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 a scan copy, a dry copy? A scan copy. It's fine. I think it's okay. Well, that's I, I just want to, I just want to make sure. With, I'm going with what the um, surveyor told me. Okay. That they would take a scan of a signature. I will. I'm more than happy to do this. So I will, I will, I will print it. I will find it. I will scan it and send it back. Okay. And then I just said, get them all on the same page. So you want to, well, Bill can say, you know what, why don't you wait till Bill signs this and I sign this and I'll round up the others and you, then we'll send it to you and you can fill the last one in. Well, he, we scan the filled out one to him. He signed it and send it back. Okay. But then I got to run you down again. He's got a scan of it. You wanted to be the first signer? Are you going to be around tomorrow? Yeah, I'm here. All right, I'm, Bill, I'm, I'll do that then. Do what do you want me to do? You, <laughs> do yours, yours first. first. You don't need to fill out the nitty gritty of the date and when it expires, because Lori can do that. You just want my okay. signature there with my signature name. Printed and signed. Not a problem. I'll and do that after the. the I'll do this can. after. I'll do this after and the I'll, meeting, and I'll send it back to you, Alice. Then I'll run it around town in my nice little Prius this weekend. Get everybody else's signature. Okay. Thank, thanks. So I wanted to get that. I didn't want to forget about that. Right. So. All right. No um, some other announcements for the for just everybody. 
is um, so Allison Allison Muirhead is not there, and she didn't stay. She wrote us a letter. She's trying to do the same thing, um, which is why I was confusing these people. They want to have. She wrote an email to us saying. Um, we are looking to purchase 28, wait, is this the same people? Request for, this is also 28 George Howard Road to host events. So I guess there's competitors for that lot. That's the same property, right? So that's probably why she left. She heard what we had to say. So we've oh, got two people, yes. the people that showed up whose names were Fisher and this lady whose name is Allison Muirhead. Muirhead, but she is also see the address on it is uh up here. She's We're looking at West Brookfield. Yeah, but twenty eight. It's twenty eight George Howard, which Road, is the, the same, same property. property. Okay, and she's so, from West Brookfield, and these other folks, I don't know where they're from. So we have two. So that's the story. That's why she left. She heard what we had to say, probably. Okay. So they're two competitors, and they both want the farm accessory use bylaw done, and. And in, inadvertently, if she sat and listened to the whole thing, we're going to get two applications for country clubs, which is. Pardon, pardon me, Madam Chair. I mean, uh, this 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 is this was clearly news to me when I when I joined the meeting. Uh, was there any correspondence that I should have received as an email regarding this here from both of these uh, parties? Well, a lot of stuff I said post, and then Mally hasn't been in for three days, so gotcha. they didn't get posted. So I will send them to you. But this was just a one paragraph email. She's mm -hmm. been chasing this this person. Her name is Allison Muirhead. Has also been chasing Roland, and Ro and she because she put in a request for determination with the building department, and he hasn't responded. But he told her to go to the um, to go to the planning board and talk to us. So my guess is that Roland probably told both of these people the same thing. Okay. Well, if you can send me the correspondence, I'd greatly I'll appreciate it. That way, at least yeah. I know I know who's who. Yes, I will. Thank you. I will. Uh, I'll try to get both of them to you. Thank you. I'll put a note to my such everybody. Excellent. Forward emails. Usually, I do, I just count on Mallory. You now I say we'll stick this in the document. Okay. Emails on twenty eight. George Howard. Bro. George Howard. Both. Okay. I'll do that before the night is out. Okay. Um, I want to also tell you that Christopher and I went to the select board meeting on Monday and they, they told us to come. Uh, they wanted us to, to know, to sponsor this zoning bylaw to increase the violations of the zoning bylaws from $50 a day um, to, to a sliding scale up to 300 I don't think that, so I said to them, which was, I thought the consensus of the planning board is that yes, we would probably support that, but we didn't think that was the big problem here. It was like increasing a fine when you have no enforcement, you know? So it's like, you know, saying, okay, if you speed through town, you're not gonna get charged $300, but you still don't have a cop car patrolling the town, right? So we're trying, anyway, Christopher was much more adamant about it. He said, and then and then actually um, Dan Gallant agreed with him, is that they don't have, enforcement's been an issue for a long time. Uh -huh. So it hasn't been, you know, the fact that the fines are too low, that people are, are not complying with the bylaws. It's that nobody's enforcing it. And so Christopher's point was, if you go to the town and you say, well, we want to increase the penalty by a factor of three, and the people in the town hall meeting say, well, what are you going to do about enforcement? And you don't have an answer to that question. Correct. The planning board is going to have a black eye and it's not going to pass. And the selectmen will. So we have decided, and then what the selectmen said is they are in negotiations over what they're going to do about, about enforcement with the building inspector, because it basically has to be a code officer's problem, right? A build, CEO officer's office that handles these things. And they're going to talk about getting more hours, and they're going to talk about a process. Um, and they're going to try to resolve it 
so that maybe this would be on the fall special meeting if we have a fall meeting where we can say yes we've we now have a new system for enforcement so that's where that goes so it probably will not be a warrant article this spring i'm in agreement not to raise the fines and still we have until we have a time to enforce them because a lot of things that happened and i don't know if i mentioned it during the last meeting to you francois but the gentleman owns the pot farm on the other side of the street from damon got all his variances approved because the billing inspector refused to give any opinion on it and there's only the default wouldn't give any of the variances until we got an opinion so the 120 days transpired and he automatically got his variances because we Correct. have no we have nobody doing enforcement or opinions and it, it, it it's it's laughable but i think i mean it that's a very good case in point that should be presented well we i i, I didn't go into the meeting with the select board that thinking you know that we should kick the ball back to their court but actually they were trying to kick put it in our court and we don't have the jurisdiction to do anything about it well, so we, we would go just go back to the meeting well they're they're proposing a joint meeting it was not a very friendly kind of meeting it was it was tough but anyway okay um i'm just updating you i also want to say you know i put in for the chapa agreement uh, uh a chapa grant to hopefully get some help we're getting some support and prop particularly with senior housing mm -hmm. and they denied the grant so oh, wow. up in flames they said they had a lot of people a lot of towns that were suddenly interested in affordable housing and then I found out on Monday, Dan Gallant said, oh yeah, those Chapa people, they came a couple of years ago and we had a big talk. And I said, well, did it change anything? And he said, no. So I suspect that that's why I didn't get the grant. <laughs> but maybe not, maybe other people are better writers. I don't know. But it was not, I did not leave with the great feeling. Um, and also we took up, the rate of development bylaw and the in-law apartment bylaw with them. But before I do that, I want to talk about, and I did warn them, it's on the agenda, and I told them we would talk about it. I want to talk about the Allen Crane situation, which is the 26 Gardner Road, the Gold Taste property, the people that want out Worcester of their Road. restoration, Worcester Road. Worcester Road. Right, Worcester Road. Um, uh, and I just, I don't want to get into the merits of it, but I did write them a letter, which I believe is in the documents. Um, Madam Chair, I, I will just say that it is not in the, uh, it is not in the, uh, in the folder. The 26 Gardner Road? Uh, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. 26 Worcester Road document file? I didn't see okay. It. No, it isn't? Maybe. It, maybe it is, maybe it is one second. I apologize. I thought it was. It's a letter to Alan Crane and Mary Ann DePinto. Okay. And if it isn't, it was sent. Oh, I okay. have not in documents on my... Okay. I did run it by Bill. What it basically said to them, and I will make sure you get it. All these things are supposed to be in there, but Mary... Yeah, there's only... I apologize, but there's only the position for the earth, earth, earth removal permit right. and the restoration. Okay. That is all so that's all, in there. All those documents were sent to them, again, both of them, mm -hmm. with this cover letter, and I will get you the cover letter. Thank you. Because uh, I had loaded them first, and I was still working on this, and then Mallory was out. But basically, I did run it by Bill, and basically it said to them, I mean, you can read it all, I'm not gonna read it verbatim, but <clears throat> reminded them that this is like the 6.8 acres out of the bigger parcel of 31.9 acres, mm -hmm. uh, what we're talking about, and that's called the pit area. So it's like, what do you wanna do with the pit? You say it's naturally restored and you claimed a hardship. So I said, if you're gonna really claim a hardship, then I said, we acknowledge that there was no sludge and that this sludge was important sludge because it was clean sludge, right? But if the paper mill isn't producing it or it's now a demand a product, an expensive product, right? Where it used to be a waste product, we need to know why it's a hardship. We need to know if he's gonna claim that, why it's a financial hardship. So I said, bring, and I tried to get hold of Talby, which I couldn't. So I said, either, you know, bring, bring a letter from the company if they won't comply with it, they can't supply it or whatever it is, 
that substantiates your claim of hardship, if that's your hardship. And then I said, if your if your arguments based on natural restoration because it's a um, you know a, a, a habitat for either endangered or rare plants and animals, you know you've got to you've got to make you know which is what they basically put in their plan. They've got to do more tailoring to where they are on this lot and mm -hmm. how and then how they would restore it. I mean how or you know if they would restore or comply with like any part of our plan for example part of our plan was get rid of the junked automobiles right are they willing to do that and i asked them um and then i saw these are the rules and regulations you know it's supposed to be graded to to no less than three to one i printed them out right how are you going to address these yeah. so and then so they're supposed to come back on second second whatever is the next meeting and I don't expect them to have a new like special permit plan filed, but I do expect them to come back with answers to some of these questions. So we need to give some thought to what we're gonna do with this. I guess um, Bill knows Mary Ann DePinto. She's actually quite a respected biologist, uh, wetlands biologist. Yeah, and, she is. Um, and she used to serve on the Hubbardson Planning Board, I'm told. And she so, retired from the DEP. Right, so she does have credentials, but we as a planning board have to decide what we're going to do. And we have choices, you know, where choices are, I guess we could just throw in the towel and dismiss the special permit or something. We could renegotiate, uh, but, but the appeal period is gone. So it would have to be a new special permit that they filed requesting a modification of the first special permit. Mm -hmm. um, or we could do nothing we could just deny the relief. No, we're not going to do it. And they'll take us to superior court probably. Um, we could do nothing and see what happens, but I think they will take us to superior court because I think the guy wants his 10,000 bucks deposit back, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only way he'll get it back. But it'll the only, other, the only other thing, one other thing to keep in mind here is, is that, I mean, they've only exported this one remediation solution. I do recall, I think it was either last year or the year before we also visited uh, the Marinella sisters, uh, um, the abutting property that has the that has the uh, dog. Uh, yes. That, okay, and it was my understanding that there was a different company with a potentially different set of ways of remediation. I don't know if we have contact with that individual uh, at this point in time, and whether or not we can put them in touch with them, uh, with 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 Mr. Crane, and see whether or not there is a potential solution there. Well, we could, but I think they, they were arguing two different arguments. One is hardship, right? And the other is that the environment, it's bad for the environment. So putting more- so I got a problem with that. Pinto didn't want any topsoil applied. She says it's the clay that grows these interesting and unusual and rare plants. So we, we, I don't know, but just speaking as a lawyer here, and I'm not saying make a decision because we don't know what they're going to come back with, right? But sure. we do have these choices. <clears throat> sure. Deny the relief, probably resolve in court, negotiate for some new special permit, or I guess you can dismiss a special permit and just let it be, which is what they're asking. But I asked her in the letter, I said, okay, if you're not going to restore it because it's a valuable habitat, how are you going to secure? how are you going to protect that valuable habitat? So it isn't all out, you know, plowed under to make the dirt bike course or something the minute we dismiss the permit. So I, you know, I've put questions on their plate um, and I, I just want you to think about that. Also the site visit, do we want to do a site visit? We have you one planned willing, on the 20th, this Saturday. This Saturday, but now Mallory hasn't followed up on it probably, and I'll probably have to follow up on it. Are you available Saturday? Not Francois, he's in California, I forget. <laughs> Francois, can you travel back? I think, Bill, I don't think she's contacted them. I think we ought to bump it for a week. Well, the following weekend is Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend. Well, I mean, Bill and I could go representing the board. 
I don't think I don't think Christopher is going to be in a position to join us. No, he's not going to be. And John, I could call and ask. I'll, I'll call them. I'll call them and see if we can do nine o'clock. And I'll have to call you, Bill, on Saturday, right? Yeah, just let me know. I'll be up. I mean, I I would like to have DePinto go with us and show us these wonderful things that I didn't see. You know, I'm not saying they're not there. Anyway, I. It's just kind of an update. I will send you this letter that I sent, and I did run it by Bill ahead of time. Bill, you have anything to add to that? Nope. No. Oh, Bill Murray? Yeah, Bill Murray. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the, the only thing is we need to know what his future use of that land is. It, it, if he wants to keep it open space, then great. We can restrict it as open space if they agree to do it. But the, the bylaw says you shall leave the land developable for a future use and yes, the clay well, pit in its current condition isn't going to work yeah and, and i think we need to be very careful with setting precedent here this was this was our this was our first case and we just want to make sure that we're not setting a precedent for the other pits i i totally agree i'm really this can, we, can, we yeah this can this this can become a slippery slope yep. very yeah. very rapidly yeah she was, her first thing out of her mouth was, though, in the parking lot before the meeting was, you know, clay pits aren't gravel pits. I know we have other clay pits. Well, now if she was on the planning board. I understand that she does know that. <clears throat> but it's a, it's a hornet's nest, and I don't know where it's going. But I did, I'll send you a copy of the letter. The letter was, I think, well-reasoned. And if she was on the board, then she knows that we have these rules and so what are you looking for us to waive and what are you willing to do? And you know, you need to lay it out. The other problem is that we cannot ask uh, Bill to jump into this without a way to pay him. Right. So I think we do have money, you know, we do have a $2,000 fee that was paid to get the first permit, right? Um, and then they also paid, Catastos also paid Bill's fee on top of that, right? So we do have a little money uh, to work with. So I was thinking we could have a vote tonight if this comes in, which it should, uh, to pay Bill to review it, to agree to do that. Maybe up to, I don't know, first review, Bill, $1,000 or something. Yep, sure. We, we're going to need his help to get our way out of this, I think. So I'll make that motion. motion. Second it. Okay, all in favor? Bill aye, aye. Okay. Fire, aye. Okay. So, Bill, when I get it, you can bill up to a thousand to look at what they're doing. All right, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Scenic uh, Road. Scenic Road is my next thing. So here's, I was, I got to quit being chair because these things drive me crazy. But <laughs> Peelville Road, nothing drove me more crazy than that, and I thought we need to add terms to the decisions. And then I had actually added them. And then I said, no, I really don't have that power. I got to talk to the board. <clears throat> so I don't know whether this was, I don't think this wound up, I think it got skipped, but it's not big. So I would like to say we have our usual decision, which, we, which I sent with no conditions, except it was just a straightforward decision. You know, we had a hearing, we decided these trees were marked that were leaning and shown on the plan, blah, 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 blah. We decided it was okay, right? So I think to all of these, we should have boilerplate decisions. And I think they should be, one, petitioners are responsible for paying all costs associated with the removal of the trees and restorations of the right-of-way. Because the first thing Rude said to us is, who's paying for this? Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, really? Well, so, uh, <laughs> so what, can we take the, what you're pro proposing here we have our checklist that we use for the A and Rs. Yeah. What if we utilize a checklist of everything we need to look at? Because not every case is going to be the same. Yeah, but these would just be. Well, let me read. Let me go okay. through them. All okay. Right. So one is condition one: the petitioner pays the costs associated. And that's always going to be the case because otherwise, if it's a dangerous tree to the right of way, right, the DPW the will take petition. it down. Right. Well, so okay, two large trees. And we need to think about this, um, must be removed by a professional tree cutting service that carries public liability insurance. 
because we these that bylaw regulates everything that's over four inches in diameter, what four feet up or something. There's yep. certain trees that if they got permission, the homeowner could take down. Mm -hmm. But the big trees, you don't want treat like those huge trees, some amateur going at it over the public way, right? So that was my second one. Large trees, I suggested 20 feet in height, anything over 20 feet in height or eight inches in diameter. Maybe that's arbitrary, but, um, but I think we had to define large to some degree, right? Three, stumps have to be cut down to a height of no more than six inches above the ground. Four, disturbed soil in the right of way must be restored to its previous level. Five, field stones which are part of stone walls which were disturbed by tree removal must be replaced to their previous location. This includes single field stones in a line at the edge of the right of way, unless permission to relocate the stones was expressly granted by the planning board as part of the scenic road decision. Well, I don't, does it have to be field stones? Why can't we stipulate and say all stones? of the stone wall. Well, they are all field stones, aren't they? What if it's something else? I'm just, I don't want to- Stone walls, all right. Stone, stone walls, stone walls. Could be safer. All stones. Stones, okay. And then six, all debris from the tree removal, including logs, limbs, branches, and wood chips must be removed from the right-of-way site. Now, I sent this to Jeff. Jeff said, is it Jeff? Or, uh, I believe, yeah, the tree warden. Tree warden. Jeff, right? Yeah, is that right? And he said, he said he would. He said applicants want to keep these logs for firewood, so we could put in a parentheses after that. Applicant may keep logs for firewood on their own property. What if they request request up the nest? Well, but I do say, but all debris from the tree removal, including logs, limbs, branches, wood chips, must be removed from the right-of-way site. That's all That's all we need to say. Yeah. Okay. I, don't want to I agree. Okay. So they could pull it back and stack it next to the garage. Right. All right. All right. And then the seventh one would be, and then I have a maybe an eighth, the petitioner must notify the planning board when the removal and cleanup is complete. Yes? Yep. And then the fourth, eighth one that we want to think about is, um, I, and I, I only sent this to Jeff Bork. I did not send it to the chief or DPW, to Travis or, or the chief. But it may be that we would say uh, something like, if the tree removal will block the road, they must notify DPW and the chief police. 48 hours in advance. When you say the chief, you mean the police? Chief of police. Yes, chief of police. Okay. Or maybe 24 hours in advance, but. Well, it is uh, stipulated in town that all contractors are going to be working in the road and blocking the traffic. They do have to get a detail officer, but you could still stipulate it there. Yeah. Well, I think DPW and right and please if, wouldn't, if wouldn't wouldn't you want the fire chief to be included for the ambulance? <laughs> are you making fun of me? or Are you serious? <laughs> oh, I'm serious. <laughs> no, yeah. I, all I, right. I, well, I think. <laughs> Do we have like a central dispatch person that could send that message? What, why don't we just put down public safety department? All public safety departments shall be notified. Yeah. Of the public safety issue. I think that makes a lot more sense. So it's not if, if, uh, and I wouldn't use block the road. I would say impact the road or something like that. Public impact safety. traffic. Impact, at all. impact traffic. Yeah. On the road. Yeah. I, I could be or walking, public safety. Right. I'm walking down the road. So th that you put public safety, that covers everything. All right. Well, I'm going to like clean this up, but. Uh, one second. I have a couple of points uh, I'd like to yeah. make. Can you repeat uh, item number two? Two was so large, large trees must be removed by a professional tree cutting service that carries public liability insurance. Uh, no, the one about the height of the trees. Oh, well, that was in it. I had in parentheses, e.g., for example. So okay. maybe we ought to actually put it not as an example, but a limit. Okay. 20 feet in height and eight inches in diameter. I'm asking because many, many of our, our public ways have, uh, have, have electric and utility cables. And I think 20 feet as an example that you're putting there uh, would potentially cause a problem if it, if oh, it was, okay. uh, if it's, and, and it probably should be anything less than that. So maybe anything over 15 feet maybe? I, I just don't know what the height is of these uh, of these the uh, cables. 
Oh, that's, that's another thing is what about, well, DP, DPW is, takes care of the wires. Is that right? I mean, I know they. What do you mean by taking care of wires? Should, should the, like, they have nothing should, to do with the wires. Should no. National Grid be also no. on the list? I mean, I, my, my concern here is, is that 20 feet, potentially, if, if the property, if, I'm sorry, if those trees are right next to, and there are some of those trees that are right next to these wires, 20 foot tree, in my opinion, would be uh, a potentially hazard if it fell in the wrong direction. If we if we stipulated in this bylaw in these rules here the fact that the police chief and uh, highway department and fire all have to be notified for public safety, they would also they would know by looking at the tree it's too close to the wires. They could stipulate. Yeah, but they too. might not go out. I just was gonna. I, I'm just I'm just concerned that we 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 may we may be giving some person or persons the ability to go out there and Maybe just simply do it on. Maybe what we want to say is all trees must be removed by a yes, you know, insured licensed tree cutting company, except those make a very minor exception. That won't impact the telephone pole and wires. Well, except those under 10 feet or well, but hold on, hold on. I mean, if, if somebody cuts this here, it falls on the road right while a car goes a car goes by. Yeah. I mean, I think that any trees should just simply be okay. done by professional. All, okay. okay, all trees. All right, so I will. I think it's too many rules, folks. If I got a piece of property that's near the road and I want to cut a tree down, whether I have my uncle that knows how to cut a tree and drop it, and it's not it's not in the town's property, we're going to say that they got to hire somebody to cut that. No, one these down. are no, no, no. These are the ones that are in the public way. That out there, I just think sometimes we get too deep in things here. And we got way too many rules going on. It just, and I understand we're all thinking about public safety and all of that. It's not only that, though, Bill. It's it's the it's the issue of liability, right? And so if if we have somebody I agree, who's, but I also I also think we can create so many rules. We can have rules about the rules to create the rules to govern the rules. And I, it's not. I, I don't think this is the case. This is the case where you put a rule, and the rule is is that if, without exception, the rule is is that you want if 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 a, if, if a if a tree in a public way needs to be cut, it has to be done by a professional company. That's it. Should be fairly simple. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to write these up one more time because they actually didn't. One get more item. Stuff. One more item. I'm sorry. Going to get some boilerplate. <laughs> I think he has another question. Sorry. One more. One more point. Yeah. I think it was item item number four. Can you read that out? And that had to do four with was disturbed soil in the right of way must be restored to previous levels. My, my my only issue with all I mean that, and that's great. But my only concern here is, is what's the timeline, right? Because I think we are oftentimes giving uh, instructions, but we're not saying it has to be done by a certain time. And I think that is an important element that may be very good for us to include in these items. Should we? Would it be okay to say it within reason, a, a reasonable time frame? Reason reason to you, reason for me can be very different. I, I think, think that it, um, it should all be part of the project. It should be part make, of the. Go shouldn't ahead. you make a number nine? All yeah. work, all work permitted by, uh, all, allowed by this permit shall be uh, completed within ninety or one hundred twenty days. Because depending on when they pull it, when they come and get it, and we approve it, maybe they can't start it for another couple months because of the weather. Well, you no. guys can change your permit conditions for unique situations. Correct. Yeah. And somebody can come in and get it renewed too. Yeah. Very much like the the one that's leaning the the one we just did on Ragged Hill Road. I would, if it were me, I'd cut those tree down, trees down myself, and I would ask for relief from that requirement. So these are boilerplate, but you guys can give relief anytime you want. Right. Correct. I, mean, I agree with you on that, though. Okay, so what about wires? Do we concern about the utility wires? No, because the professional tree people would know what they're doing, right? That's that's their responsibility, and that's why they okay. they have right. a, they have liability insurance. I'm, okay, I'm not putting these into the net. I want them ready to be included. And then Mallory's also, we're working on revamping the application a bit to make it clear what the, you know, a little bit about the bylaw and yep. that we really I don't know. We're working on the application, but this is, these are decision conditions. Okay. So I'll send them out. Um, they're in my list when we get home. Okay. So I know it's getting like crazy late, but can I just, um, I didn't do anything with the in-law apartment, but I'm working on a draft from what we worked at. I do agree 
I now I now agree that the, you have to allow an exterior staircase for a second floor unit as long as it's on the side or back because I learned that if you were to put a stairway through a garage, which would seem reasonable, it actually doesn't count no, because, because your second egress can't go through a garage. So that was one thing. And anyway, we, it needs another iteration or two, but I'll have a draft. But I took on rate of development, which isn't which I sent to you guys, to everybody, mm -hmm. right. which isn't exactly, and then I reread it. It's a really convoluted, not well written by law, in my opinion. <laughs> but um, there was one mistake in it. So uh, which which I'm in my analysis of it. And that is what it says is a builder can get two house, can get uh, two building permits for single or two family houses within a month. Only two, that's the limit, one builder. And one builder can only get permits for five units in a year. So actually you could build in theory, the builder could build like a threeplex and a twoplex, right? Um, but anyway, the rest of it sort of stands, and, and I'm willing to take a stab at how we would do this, but I want to, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time writing if people don't agree, mm -hmm. right? Right. So <clears throat> my summary was with the per current rate of development by law, I, I pointed out, and I went through this with, this, with the select board, I said, because I talked to Bill about this too. If you... If you've had this law in effect for over 10 years and the most building permits that have been issued in those 10 years is 12, and it's varied from, you know, 479-888-666 and 12, way back in 2014, why, why do we need this growth control? There was like this mini bubble in 1999 and 2000. Yep. But I can tell you the select board is adamantly opposed. We need this bylaw because if we were to lift it, all hell would break loose in Hubbardson. So, which I probably shouldn't say on live, but anyway, there's a lot of support for keeping it. And they're, they're the people that have lived here and you know lived through the double sessions of school. And I guess it was a real problem when it was a yeah, problem. Yeah, it was, it was hard. So the, uh, the present bylaw caps new dwelling units at 28. Okay, the most we've built in the last 10 years is 12. A year. <clears throat> Yeah, 28 a year. And these are dwelling units, right? Mm -hmm. So my problems with it are, are sort of what's included and what's excluded. It apparently includes in-law and accessory apartments because you have to get a building permit for those and they are dwelling units, right? So I would say we should exclude those because I'm working at trying to help the housing situation for the elderly and the young and right? So that's one thing I would do was I would, we exclude in-law, uh, where hopefully it's going to turn into accessories apartments, right? Mm -hmm. Which is going to include both in what is now in-law and accessory. Okay. It includes for some reason conversions. I don't even know what a conversion means. Well, what if they change it from the regular part of the house to an in-law apartment, it's still space that's being used and they're converting it to a new space. Is that what that means? The Maybe. conversion is usually a one family to a two family. Oh, is that what that means? Usually. So that picks that so that picks up in-laws. Well, one family. I, I don't know if an in-law is considered a two family house. Okay, so actually conversions is a, a term of art. Yeah, but it's it, subject to interpretation. Well, maybe we could we could leave the word conversion and put of a one family to two. Or you just change definitions in the zoning bylaw. Well, all right. Anyway, okay. Well, maybe that's where they, maybe Sorry. that's how in-laws <laughs> and accessories have escaped. But no, actually they say included under the cap are conversions. So that would be included. So they were specifically including, if they were in-laws, including. Them. I think they should be excluded. I do not think that it's going to cause undue crowding in the town to allow people to put an in-law apartment on. So is an in-law apartment by special permit or by right? Right now, it's accessory apartments are by special permit and in-law apartments are by right. And I kind of keep that in the new structure, but either way, if they were conversions, they would 
be counted presently as one of those 28 units. So I think they should be excluded. That's my point. I agree with I understand. that. Yeah. Okay, so, and then excluded from the cap, which makes sense. Oh, no, included also in the cap are all units in open space residential developments. And then it says in all units in senior residential developments, unless waived by the planning board, but it was waived by the planning board from Moreland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I don't see, I, I, I just think that doesn't make sense. Um, partly because, first of all, it's, it's very arbitrary. The, the, the provision for waiver is the planning board can override the above limits by special by special permit to allow up to 10 single family residential units with the following finding. And the finding is a salient and unmet housing need would be addressed by granting such a permit. These are, these are, that's the, oh, okay, I'm a little bit confused here. That's the restriction on single family houses. They can allow up to 10 single family residential units single family, yeah, houses. So my question was be, would be, suppose, presumably if you had a salient unmet housing need, why would it be best addressed by building single family housing? I, I, and the other thing is I just think it invites, you know, it's ambiguous, it means vague, right? And it leaves it up to the planning board. So, you know, when somebody like Ed Blanchard asks, who's known around town, who's respected and who did a great job, and I'm not taking anything away from him, but he gets it. But the new builder in town comes in and the plan says, well, I don't think that's salient, you know? I, I think it needs to be, I think we need to say what we're gonna allow and what we're not gonna allow um, with maybe some wiggle room by the planning board, but that was exercised once, I'm told, to add units to more Moosehorn mm -hmm. yeah. in the 20 years. Okay. So the, what, the two exceptions that have been made to this are Moreland Green and Moosehorn's addition. Anyway. anyway, so I think, and I think open space residential developments and senior residential developments, both of which require 20 acres, they ought to have the same restrictions really. They're both, and you're never gonna get anybody that's gonna build either one of them if you can only build five units, five, right. five permit, five units, five dwelling units a year, that's the limit. Nobody's ever gonna, for one developer, would ever build either one of those if that's the limit. Uh, that's not that far out of the realm of the capacity of a medium-sized builder, five buildings a year. It isn't five buildings, it's five units. units. Yeah, but I do agree that if you get a special five permit- Five buildings would be fine. Five building permits a year, that'd be fine. And you, you pick out whether you wanna, and even if you wanna leave it with two for a family house, single family houses and two families, which is what it is, two building permits a year. It's kind of but small. Then you but... could say with the three, four, three and four units, I don't know. I think it needs to be. We're, we're not going to see three and four units because they require sprinklers. And that's a pretty tough thing to do on a well. Um, it can be done, but it's very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I agree that if the planning board issues a special permit for an open space or a senior living, you should have the ability to determine whether the, the rate of growth applies or not. Because Senior living is something that is fantastic for the town. It generates taxes and it doesn't, it doesn't impact the town by school children, et cetera, et cetera. Frees up housing for school children and everybody else. So if I agree, yeah, Alice, that they should not be subject to it through the special permit process. Well, the open space, the open space residential development doesn't allow any more density than is allowed on the subdivision plan, right? Which so we did, should revisit because- That's what it says. Right, that's what a lot of them say. But they're really, in, in a town like Hubbardston, there isn't a whole lot of motivation to do an open space. There really is no benefit to do it other than maybe slightly smaller lots and, and lesser road. 
and that's not what sells in Hubbardson. If we really want an open space, we need to give them a benefit. Right. We need to give them affordable units or something because I don't think we've ever had an open space. They've all been seniors. Yeah, yes. I think that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, and we need, we need some more. I'm not talking about affordable home. I, I am, I do talk about SH, you know, SHI units, true affordable housing units in here, but we need moderate housing because yeah. look at how cool the state average school populations have plummeted all over the state by about 7% in this time period. Ours has plummeted 35%. So we are not making space for families. And part of that is because we have no place for the seniors to go. Because right. they would take a townhouse. And we have no place for a young family to go. And they would take a duplex unit, right? So that's what I'm trying to work into it. Um, I just want to walk through the rest of it, though, because I know it's getting late. So the exception for, for affordable housing reads I know it's complicated. It's it's basically the developments have to be proposed by public nonprofit or limited dividend organizations or corporations. They have to use state or federal subsidies, and the buildings have to be 25% moderate income and 25% middle income. And I just think, and and the planning board has to find there's a special need for housing. So I think where we have 3% affordable housing unit, and we're supposed to have 10. And most ho affordable housing units these days are either are built into other developments. You know, they're not the big 40B projects. They're the, the units that should have been put in Moreland Green. If we had our act together, we'd say, yes, you can build them, but five have to be. Mm -hmm. Or there are people like, like Blair, who's a for-profit corporation, but he knew how to play the tax credits mm -hmm. and you know the state now has two two programs for for private builders to build affordable housing um and and they'll help walk you through the process one's called the uh, see if i can the uh local initiative program the lip yep and the housing stabilization fund mm -hmm. those are available to not to for-profit corporation builders so why should we have a growth restriction bylaw that limits the exception for affordable housing to only um, uh, public nonprofit and limited dividend organizations? The limited dividend organization is a corporation that you put up entirely to build affordable housing with its own structure. It's not a private corporation. Yeah. But Alice... If, if I came into Hubbardston with a LIP, I wouldn't care what your zoning bylaw says because I can request waivers from the from the Zoning Board of Appeals to all local bylaws and that it, they just don't matter. So that zoning bylaw wouldn't even bother me if I were a comprehensive permit. Bill, why would the Zoning Board of Appeals grant that application for a waiver? You're, you're obligated to. Under what? Under the comprehensive, under 40B. 40B, are they a 40B? They participate. All right, but if you were a LIP person, you could be a private, if you were a LIP developer, you could be a for profit. Could right. You, you, go to, you go to the Board of Selectmen and you say, I want your endorsement as the, the executive board of the town. This is what I'm planning on building. And if the Board of Selectmen say, that's a good idea, hopefully in consultation with the planning board, but if they say that's a good idea, then you've got a Board of Selectmen endorsed project, which doesn't mean it's going to win, but that means they're going to give you your uh, letter of intent from the affordable, whatever your affordable agency is, and you get to file a comprehensive permit on the town of Hubbardston. But I'm just saying, if you're, re if you're revive revising this rate of development bylaw, right? You should really either exclude. I think I you think, should exclude all affordable housing. Yeah, all it's SHI units. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's a need that so we a, need to get to 10%. So yeah, they, they should never be a part of that. Okay, so, so far, and again, this is going to be drafting. I'm mm -hmm. not. But, but I'm, I'm just, just simply pointing out to you, it's six and one half to the other, because if I file that application, 
I don't care about your rate of development bylaw. I don't care about any of your zoning bylaws because I can ask and mandate a waiver to them. Which and and get that now that I'm thinking yeah, about but, it. but when you, I mean, I know, I know that there is big, re, there's big fear in this town because I've heard it from multiple parties, right? Nobody wants the project, right? I don't know why not. If, if you, <laughs> but I know, but because they think of the project is like Great Brook Valley, right? So why would you have a bylaw, a growth control bylaw that's just like the red flag in front of the bull? I mean, why not, why not say, yes, we want SHI units. And you they're know, not you know subject to growth rate. I think yeah. you're right. I agree. Until we get to that state target, we can't, they could get around it anyway. So why, and why limit it to these to these uh, very, uh, I mean, I, yes, I'm sure people still do limited dividend and well, Habitat for so, Humanity, the nonprofit building an SHI, that house. So yeah. Alice, we just have to keep, keep in mind that your growth rate should exempt them until the town reaches its 10%. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And at least you have a cap. Yep. Which is 123 units to go. That's today. Yeah. Well, we got we got habitat building a house that'll count. Okay, so um, all right. So then another, pro I mean, if you want to quit, we can quit. It's getting late, but it's twenty minutes to nine. It's early for Francois. <laughs> yeah, early. I'm just I'm just starting my evening. All right, I did I did, I did I did I did want to point out that uh, item F was skipped over the agenda. Okay, I'm I'm stopping it. Uh, I'm marking my discussion here. Uh, rate of development, and we'll come back to it. What is oh review <laughs> review of the revised draft of the new BESS bylaw? Well, it, yeah. it, it and it's more importantly, it's it is really the second part of it, which is the you know not only that, but it's also to send to places an associate to get a quote for the re review fee yes. and schedule yes, the public fact, hearing, right? Right, and we did alert the select board that this was yeah. that we were going to promote this to the warrant. <laughs> and there and then there's. Now. And briefly, also the discussion of the overlay district. And uh, I do, I do know that I did speak with Bill very briefly about uh, this here, and I did send him a uh, couple of emails. Uh, one which basically has the proposed overlay district, and the other one which is the lines for the three-phase electric uh, and that basically uh, covers the town of Hoverston. Yeah. So, I Bill, I'm assuming. Bill, I'm assuming. But I don't know that they got posted. And Bill, I assume that you received both emails, right? I did. Okay. I got yours on the revised one, but I didn't get the three-way. It was a map with little red lines. No. Nope. It is. It is up. It is up on the on the shared drive. Oh, it is. It is. Did, you get, did it get up? I read them because you sent them to me, but I don't. If yeah, you I want to skip you, actually, that was pretty. That was the one thing we kind of agreed upon at the select board. Right. And so, what um, I'd like to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, so, Bill, have you figured out what it would cost to to just review it? I'm still waiting on a quote from my electrical engineer. He's supposed to. He was supposed to have gotten back to me on Monday, and I haven't heard from him. Well, I mean, what we have here on the agenda is a vote to send to places an associate to get a quote for the review fee and schedule a public hearing, right? So I think that at this point in time, we could vote to basically make sure that places and associates is 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 given the the uh, uh, the task of, of getting us that quote, and we can yes. get it back by the next 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 meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah, I should have had it for this one, but yep. So, Bill, do you actually have copies of all of them, Francois's latest draft? I do. Okay. And the two do documents. Uh, I'll just save so. a yes. little bit of Mallory. Okay, so. I will just point out, and if, if I may, Madam Chair, there's been one spot. I mean, this it's, it's been going back and forth a little bit between myself and and Chris, uh, the other uh, planning board member. The, the the delineation of what is considered to be a tier one versus a tier two. <clears throat> Originally, we had it for 600, then we brought it down to 200, brought it back to 600, and basically the discussion had to do with the fact that. Uh, a lot of the technology is evolving, especially now with the electrification of our uh, transportation vehicles. And so as a result of that, it was decided by myself and with the input that I received from, uh, from Christopher 
to, to put it back up to 600 because that seems to be a quantity that would fit very, very well within the uh, boundary of what would be considered a tier one, a non-grid uh, interconnected uh, system versus a tier uh, two grid interconnected system. Okay, just wanted to make clear that that was also added there. So I don't know, Bill, does the draft you have have it at two or six? Uh, Francois? <laughs> uh, you know what? I have an open. I, 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 I'm more than happy to send you the latest draft, which we have on the shared drive, unless you have access to the shared drive. I don't. We, I, I will more than, I'm more than happy to uh, send you that draft. Okay. You could do that because we all have it. So it's. Yeah. And I know mind. that Mal, I, I know that Mallory is not available right now. So I'm, I'm doing that on her behalf if I get your permission, Alice. Yes. Yes. And we're. Okay. And, Thank you, Francois. And he's made a motion made to get a motion. quote. We need a second. And I'll second it. And I vote aye. Yep. Yeah, Live all aye. Yep. We're all good. Okay. So I think. Yes. We could go on forever, but I'm really tired. Is there anything else that's pressing? I'm pressing along with the affordable housing and the oh, and the the best. I told them three articles we're going to try: the in-law, now accessory use, the best by law, and the rate of development. So okay. if we can get those accomplished, that, we'd be lot. good. And I'm hoping we could have one hearing day and maybe do all three of them mid-January, but that may be ambitious. <laughs> it would be nice. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second, Second it. Second it. <laughs> all right. All Francois, enjoy your time in California. We need show. to vote. We need to say yes, right? Yes. Oh. <laughs> no, yes. Woman's eye. Steiger eye. <laughs> <laughs>